This video is not intended for any commercial purposes. This video is intended for students of Singidunum University. So, in today's video, we are going to show the implementation of CentOS 7 operating system with a patch to web server using VMware Workstation Pro Hypervisor. My name is Abel Shabachin Jakula, PhD. So, VMware Workstation Professional is level 1 hypervisor and that means that it works above the operating system. So, in this example, we are going first to install VMware Workstation Pro under Windows 10 operating system and then we are going to configure CentOS 7 Linux operating system. First, we have to download the VMware Workstation Pro. So just type VMware Workstation Pro download. We go here. And the current version is 15. We just have to go here and to download the product. In this case, I won't be downloaded this product because I've already installed it. This is a professional product, so we will have to buy the license, but fortunately there is a license, uh, there is a trial period, and within this period we can try this product. So, as I mentioned, I've already installed VMware Workstation. We just have to click, double click on this icon and the workstation will appear. Secondly, we have to download ISO file from the CentOS website. So again, we go to Google and just type CentOS 7 download, choose the first result. So, we have a couple of options here. We can choose DVD ISO, everything ISO and minimal ISO. In this case, I will choose minimal ISO because, because this ISO image file contains the bare minimum that is needed for CentOS 7 to run. And now we have to choose the download source I choose the first link and finally the CentOS is being downloaded. As in the previous case, I'll just cancel this download because I've already downloaded the CentOS operating system and its image file is here on my desktop as you can see. So now we are going to create our virtual machine in VMware Workstation Professional Hypervisor. As I already mentioned, this is a Type 2 hypervisor that works above the operating system. There are also Type 1 hypervisors that work directly above the computer hardware. And in some next video, I'm going to show you also how to install type 1 or level 1 hypervisor. So first we have to do, we go to file and choose this option, new virtual machine. We are going to choose this typical recommended option. So now we have to point to the installation, installation medium. That's our ISO file. We go here, install on disk image, ISO. We go to the browse. We go to the, our desktop. And finally, in this case, we point to this CentOS 7 minimal installation image file. Then we go and click to this next button. Now we have to 
choose the name for our virtual machine. I will choose, let me say, CentOS 7 Apache 2 because later on we will install Apache 2 web server on this machine. We go to the next. Now we need to set the maximum size of our virtual hard drive. It states here that recommended size for CentOS 7 operating system is 20 gigabytes. I will stick to this configuration. I leave this as it is. We go to the next. And OK. Uh, our virtual machine obtained 140 24 megabytes on system memory. This is enough for this minimum CentOS installation. So I go to the and click this button finish. And just after this, the installation will start. Okay, we choose this first option, install CentOS 7. Okay, we press the enter key. And we wait. This image file needs to be uploaded into our system memory. So during the installation process, the installation, the installation will ask us many questions. So first, we have to choose our language. I choose English, United States. It's OK. And click Continue. And then we have a couple, uh, couple of different options to define. First, date and time. For the region, we'll choose Europe. We'll choose City Belgrade. OK. We click on Done. OK, for the keyboard, English US layout is good. Language support English United States, it is good. Installation source, local media, that's our ISO file. Software section, minimum stop, that's good. Installation de destination, automatic partitioning select. Oh, that's good because the installation will, for us, partition this virtual disk we've just created. Network and host name not connected. OK, we'll do it later. We just click here done. OK, and now we can begin the installation process. So the installation is doing in the background. And at this screen, we will set root password. So CentOS comes with enabled root account and root access and okay maybe we can create one user I type never shut button in username will be n b a c a n i n and I'll choose password for this account okay requ require a password to use this account okay we click on that and now the installation is going on. I'm going to pause this video till the installation is finished. So finally the installation is complete and now we have to reboot our operating system. But we click on this button. I finished installing because the virtual disk will be ejected. And now finally the operating system boots up. OK, now we can log in with our credentials. As you recall, I created one account, but also I can log in with the root access. So I type root and I type in the chosen password. OK, so at this point, our virtual machine is installed and it's ready to be used. But for now on, I'm going to shut down this machine with the command init zero. And you'll see why. 
because before we start installing the Apache 2 web server, we need to configure the network. If I go right click here on our virtual machine and go to settings, here we see network adapter. Uh, we have currently we have one network adapter and its type of net network address translator. That means that our virtual machine is behind net device. So our virtual machine shares the host's IP address. It shares the IP address of our physical host, which in this case is Windows operating system. We also have an option for the bridged network. In the bridged network case, we connect our virtual machine directly to the physical adapter. So our virtual machine is treated like any other physical machine that is directly connected to our network. But in this case, we will use network address translation. So if we have many virtual machines behind this virtual net device, they will all share the same host's IP address, but with different local addresses behind this net device. So we'll use network address translation address type. And now, for example, if we go here to edit and virtual machine network editor, here we see, we can see our network address translation device. We go here to change settings. Okay. And so here we have DHCP settings. What does it mean? This network address translation virtual device has its own DHCP server, dynamic host configuration protocol server. And that server is used to distribute IP addresses of our to our virtual machines. So here we have a starting IP address. It's 192.168.13 and the ending is 192.168.1254. It's a good configuration, so I leave it as it is. Also here we can see this. This is subnet IP for our virtual machines uh, behind the net device and this is a subnet mask. Because many virtual machines uh, are behind this net device, later on we'll have to use something called port forwarding in order to access Apache 2 web server on the virtual machine from our physical host operating system, but we'll do it later. For now on, let's keep, just click on the OK button and let's play again our virtu virtual machine. So, our operating system has bought it. Our virtual machine is up and running. So, we'll log in again. So, first thing we want to check is to see our IP address. We can use on CentOS 7 the following command. IP address show. Okay, so here we see that here is our loopback address. It's the address of our local network card. And then we see the address of our network interface. But here we see that we have nothing. So one more time, I'm going to shut down this machine. And this time, here where we go to net adapter, this time I'm going to add one more network interface card with this button add. And its name is network adapter 2. And it also will be net. And I'm going to check one more time 
if everything is okay with our network configuration so we go here to net change settings yes and then we go to net okay subnet is good subnet mask is good dhcp settings it distributes ip address from 1.3 to 1.255 it is good so our machine should get address 1.3 because our machine is first machine in the pool okay 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 now again we'll start our virtual machine and to see if the problem is fixed So I think there is a glitch here because when we have only one virtual network card, this card is not operational, at least in CentOS 7 operating system. Okay, so we type AP address show. Okay, good. Here we have, so first is our local loopback address. Then this is this network adapter ENS33, that's our first network adapter. And this adapter did not obtain IP address. And finally we have our second network adapter ENS37 and here we have our address 192.168.1.4 with 24-bit subnet mask. So. Uh, to mention one more time, I think that this is a glitch in VMware Workstation Professional, at least with uh, CentOS 7 Apache operating system. So when we have only one network card, this card does not obtain AP address from the dynamic host configuration protocol service of the NAT device. But when we add a second network card, the problem is fixed. Okay, so now we have a network that is operational, so we can test our network to see if we have access to the internet through our physical network card. So I'm going to ping google.com. Okay, everything is good. We have internet control message protocol eco reply. So with control C, I'm going to stop ping the pink command so i'm going to clear the screen okay so uh, if you noticed i used ip address show command if i type ip config that's a legacy traditional linux command to test and see ip configuration we see that this command is not available if we want to use this legacy command we can do something like that we can install with the command yam install package called net tools. So as you know, CentOS operating system uses Red Hat package management. So new applications are installed with the yam command. Okay, now it states, are we sure that we want to add net tools? We say yes, is this okay? Yes. Okay, complete. I'm going to clear screen one more time and now I'm going to use the command ipconfig. Okay, here I see that again the result is the same. I have two network interface cards, this one and this one, and this is the address of my logback adapter. Okay, so first I want to update our software repositorium so we type yam update so we are logged with the root account so we do not we don't have to type sudo before command that is going to be executed within the root contents so update is performed
So, as you have seen, I have paused the recording because the update took about five to six minutes. I, I didn't want to you to wait. So, now the repository is updated. So, I'm going to type one more time IP config command, okay, to make sure that our IP address is 192.168.1.4. So now I'm going to install the Apache 2 web server. We perform the following command, yam install HTTP daemon. So that's the name of Apache 2 package. And it states that Apache 2 package is 10 megabytes long. So I'm going to click yes, it's fine for me. And the installation is complete. So now we've installed HTTP daemon or Apache 2 web server. Now we want to do the following. First, we want to enable HTTP daemon to start on boot, on the system boot, because this is our virtual machine that has the role of the web server. So we want Apache 2 HTTP daemon to start when the system is booted up. So we type enable. HTTPD, oh, oh, sorry, 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 we type uh, sudo, for example, system CTL, enable HTTPD.service. With this command, we enabled HTTP daemon on system boot. And now we want just to restart this service, just to make sure everything is working properly. So we type sudo system CTL, restart httpd.service okay now the apache 2 is up and running but so we want to access to apache 2 web server on our linux virtual machine from our host operating system and in this case this is linux for this uh, we are going to need two things. First, we want to configure the firewall on our Linux machine to accept incoming connections for HTTP and HTTPS protocols. So, we type firewall dash cnd double dash zone equals public. That's for the public zone from the internet. So, we want that all people from the internet can access our Apache 2 web server. So we put double dash permanent double dash add dash service equals HTTP. So now we can access our Apache 2 with HTTP protocol from outside both from the internet and from our host operating system and in this case this is Windows 10 operating system and then we want to do the same for the HTTPS protocol and finally we want to reload firewall firewall dash cmd double dash reload so now we have configured the firewall and one more thing before we can access our Apache 2 web server from our host uh, operating system, Windows 10, we need to uh, configure network address translation with port forwarding. So, as you recall, I said that behind net device of Weber Workstation Level 2 or Type 2 hypervisor, we can have many, many virtual machines. And each of this virtual machine gets address in the range we configured from DHCP server. And each of these virtual machine is connected to the host physical network adapter. So all those machines use the same physical network adapter of the physical host. So we need to do the port forwarding. We need to tell or to designate through which port of the host 
physical network adapter we want to access our Apache 2 web server. So we go here, we go to edit and choose this option virtual machine editor. We go to net. We again click on this button change settings. Okay, cool. so we again go to net and we go to net settings. Now we want to add port forwarding rules here in this windows with the button add. So host port. So when we target our virtual machine, we target and access our virtual machine through the local loopback address of our host machine. And this is 127.0.0.1, for example. But it may be some other address. It's important that this address starts with 197. And also we can use a friendly DNS name like localhost. But now we need to designate the port on the physical host network adapter through which we want to access our virtual machines, web service and Apache web server. So this port can be anything above 1024 because as you know ports below 1024 are well-known ports and they are reserved for the well-known services like telnet ssh http https uh, etc so in this example i'm going to use host port for example 1313 this will be tcp for this, we, we are going to use TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, Transport Protocol, not UDP. And virtual machine IP address is, as you can recall, from our net device and DHCP server, we got address 192.168.1.4. If we want this machine to be a regular web server, of course, we wouldn't use DHCP server, we would use static IP address because this address is permanent and this is this address is dynamic and it's dynamically changing over the time but this is just example so we are using DHCP and virtual machine port is 80 because web server can be accessed with the port 80 by default and here in the description we just type a rule for example not forwarding rule for Apache 2 web server. And then we click OK button and we click OK. And here again we click OK. So the default document root for Apache 2 web server is in this folder cd var www html so everything we put here will be available through the web and for now in this folder there is only Apache 2 web page and for this lesson for this tutorial we just want to test the connection to our Apache 2 web server on our virtual Linux machine from our host operating system. So we open the browser and we can just type 1.27.001 and to define the port number it's 1330. So 127.0.0.1 it's local loopback address of our physical host network adapter and 1313 is the port we used in the port forwarding rules. Click OK. Oh, and it's good. We successfully accessed Apache 2 web server on our virtual Linux machine. And also we can use, as I already have mentioned, we can use a friendly domain name like localhost column 1313. And again, we access our web server. So thank you everybody for watching this video. This video was just a brief demo video uh, about installing and configuring 
virtual machine zone when we're workstation. So we've installed CentOS 7 Linux operating system on virtual machine under VMware Workstation Professional Type 2 Hypervisor. In the next videos, I'm going to show you how to install virtual, mach virtual machines and how to configure uh, Type 1 hypervisors as well as another Type 2 hypervisor visor called Oracle Virtual Box from the Oracle company. I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed this video and see you soon. Goodbye.